Well, hello everybody. I'm here today to run through my packing list. I'm getting ready to go on a shorter excursion. I'm going by myself. It's going to be a solo tour. And I'm heading out to Wisconsin. I'm going to hit the Root River Trail, probably right along the Mississippi, and you know, see how far I get. Uh, just trying to get my legs moving and trying to get uh, a little bit of action going before this summer's over. So I wanted to go through the stuff I need to put together to feel like I've got everything I need on a bike tour. Now I know when you're putting your list together you don't necessarily think about all these things, but you need your water bottles. Water bottles taken care of. Don't forget your sunglasses. Don't forget those gloves. Don't forget the helmet. Nice bright green. That's kind of the color that I prefer. I like being seen. I'm big on visibility. Got my Pearl Izumi bike touring shoes. These are just lace-ups, so they actually look like regular shoes, but they do clip in. Even though I don't typically clip in when I'm bike touring, it's nice to have that option when you really do need to torque it up a little bit. Finally, something that I never pack and I always have available is my GoPro. This is a GoPro 11. It's the most recent one. And I like having it on a stick. I like being able to film around me, one hand on the handlebars and one hand on the GoPro. And this is a new setup here. I've actually got a media mod package for this that gives me the ability to have a remote speaker on it if I choose to. Uh, so while I'm riding, I don't have to worry so much about wind noise. That's gonna be handy. The other thing that it does is it does kind of create more of a selfie stick and that also forms a little tripod. And this is kind of just a little cheapy, but it does form a nice little tripod in case I want to use it for that. So a bunch of different things all in one in this tripod. And where I'm keeping that, this little front bag is where I'm putting in my GoPro. Nice and open and super easy to pull in and out because there's no fun in seeing something that you want to shoot right away and not being able to get to your camera quickly. Easy to grab, easy to drop, and that bag is dedicated only for the GoPro. Now since we're on the subject of cameras, I might as well show you how I pack my camera stuff. This is all going to go into one of the front panniers. And I keep everything in these little toiletry bags that I picked up on Amazon. And I actually have a way of labeling them so when I glance in and I want to pull something out, I can, I can see what's inside of it. This is cameras and mics. And inside this bag, I'll have an extra GoPro if there's any problems. I've got extra batteries for the GoPro, which I can charge at night. I've got an extra handle. If that handle ends up breaking or something, this weighs nothing. I have a bunch of very lightweight things. These are little foam wraps for GoPros or also dead cats and extra batteries. You know, you always want to be prepared. And then finally, a bunch of extra discs so that I can load these babies up and get a ton of film to show when we get back. And very well protected. Here's my extra GoPro. It's a GoPro 8. This baby has done really, really well. And this is how I used them before I got the media mod. And this is a very simple foam cushion around the GoPro. And it keeps the wind from messing with your audio and really helps out a lot. Also, I have this little baby. Part of the device is on the camera right now and part of the device is on my shirt, but this is a remote microphone that I'm using. It's from DJI, also the maker of the drone. It's got a great little case for it. It allows for two speakers so that when Juliana and I are riding, we both can clip this baby in and you can hear us both. No matter how far we are away, it'll be recording us both. But really nice little case and super easy to charge. You just plug it in here. I keep it in this bag along with whatever appropriate connectors and also there's some dead cats and the dead cats are basically the little foam covers for the microphones so that you can keep that wind noise down also in that bag is another one of those toiletry bags and this one is labeled drone and inside i've got the actual drone here which is wrapped up in a sock i'll fold it up i've got uh, extra batteries and then i've got the controller in here I like keeping everything packed separately in these little toiletry bags. Um, it's great to be able to just look in and know what you've got. 
I'm not a very organized person, so I need help to organize. Labeling really helps me keep stuff where it belongs. And so in this front pannier, I'm gonna have the drone, and I'm gonna have the camera and microphone stuff. It's all stuff that I might need on the fly. Everything I need is gonna be on my right front pannier. And if I stop, I go, oh, that looks great. I wanna hit, hit it with the drone, or I wanna do something special with the camera. Well, everything is gonna be in that bag. So I only have to open up that one bag and I don't have to go looking all over the place for where that stuff is. So it's important to keep stuff organized, but there's another element to this that you have to consider, and that is the weight. And when I'm packing everything, I have a scale out and I get up on the scale and I keep kind of readjusting. I try to keep the bags uh, consistent or you know homogeneous so that you know all the camera equipment, the drone for example, is in one bag. But that comes out a little bit light. Uh, these bags are averaging about 10 pounds each, I'd say right now. It comes out a little bit light. So I'm also in including my first aid kit in there. So there's gonna be three bags. There's gonna be the drone, there's gonna be the camera and my uh, bag, and then there's gonna be a small first aid kit. First aid kits do need a little bit of uh, discussion as well. I use these uh, small little Ziploc bags to keep everything separate. I got as few band-aids as I really need, not very many, mostly butterfly band-aids, some big ones. I have a bag full of painkiller, Advil, and also uh, the Tylenol variety. I'm gonna bring some hydrocortisone. I'm probably gonna get bit by bugs. I'm definitely gonna keep some of this. This is diclofenic sodium topical gel, but this is basically Voltaren. And this stuff is a miracle if you don't use it. If you have anything sore on your body, you rub this in, it's ibuprofen for the skin. I mean, you rub it in and it actually really helps with muscle aches and all that kind of stuff. Really great to have. Keep a pair of scissors, you just, you know, you might have to cut gauze or if worse comes to worse, an ACE bandage is gonna really come to your rescue, can work as a tourniquet and can do all kinds of stuff in a first aid situation. I also keep some tweezers in case uh, a bad splinter or something. I don't know, it's kind of silly, but I do it anyway. And then of course, you gotta have triple antibiotic ointment. Anytime you cut yourself, you wanna make sure that you're not getting infected. So a little bit of that, and then some gauze and some tape and an alcohol or a prep pad or two. Again, just in case something happens. It's not a lot. I guess the whole thing probably weighs four ounces. And it is labeled in case somebody really needs it and is looking through my bags and I'm out, they can find a first aid kit in here. So that's gonna be the right front pannier. So in my left front pannier, similar kind of thing, I have a couple of toiletry bags there. One of them is for electronics. Now this is stuff I don't need along the trail. This is gonna be stuff that when I get to the hotel or get to a campground that has electricity, I can pull this baby out. And with all the gizmos I carry, the GoPros, uh, the iPhone, the drones, and also the bike lights, it takes a lot. What I first do when I come into a hotel, plug everything in. There's a three-prong plug, and I've got all these different plugs. Uh, some of them are lightning adapters, some of them are, I don't know the names of all the adapters, but I can plug in all my drones, all my batteries, all my GoPros, all of my lights, and my phone into this, and I'll have everything charged by morning. So it's just one plug-in and you know how hotels are they don't usually have a lot of plugs so this kind of takes care of all that and uh, it's an awesome cure and when we were in europe you know i have one of these that's designed for france or if you know if i was going to go to germany or you know wherever they have different plugs you just get one that fits that country and it kind of takes care of all your problems it's a plug and play yeah i also keep a an extra charger uh, this oftentimes ends up on top of my front rack and plugs into my phone so that my phone, if I'm using it to uh, navigate or whatever, I've always got juice in it. I never want it to run out of juice. So this thing holds quite a bit of, uh, quite a bit of phone charges in it. And then I have extra uh, wires here as well, uh, if I need them. 
Along with that, since this is a uh, pannier that only opens once we get someplace, this is where I'll keep all my toiletries. Of course, this is kind of heavy stuff. Some of this stuff I don't need to share that much, you know, hairbrush, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, I do wear contacts, so I always need to have solutions and that kind of stuff to clean it. This is kind of heavy. This is also where I would keep any kind of pills. With all my medications. Yeah, believe it or not, I do take medications. Of course, your razor, you know, a pair of scissors, maybe. Um, toothpaste, toothbrush, all that stuff is really up to you. But you know, I keep my toiletries in that front bag as well. And now pretty much you got, you got the weight balanced between the two front panniers. Very important on the front. And it's still important on the back as well. So that takes us to our back panniers. And let's see here, we'll start with, gosh, where should we start? Well, how about, okay, we'll start with this. So inside here is all of my cooking stuff. This is a great little mess kit from MSR. Uh, I love how this clamp just holds this down, pops open, forms the uh, handle. Now the lid comes off and inside I'm able to keep the stove itself as well as a spork, a little salt and pepper. Now this stove, I kind of keep it wrapped up here in this little mesh bag. What's in there? Oh yeah, there's a lighter in there too. Makes sense. So it all comes in this little kind of triangular container. If you open it up, pop it out, boom, there's your stove. That's it, that's all you need. Opens up like that and your pot holds onto that and you screw this into the fuel canister. But what a fine little piece of equipment this is, I think, wow. Just tiny and it really puts out an awful lot of heat. Something that I'm not bringing along, but uh, for cooking that uh, is nice to have when Juliana and I go camping, we love to have this, is our little handy dandy backpacking French press. Just pour the coffee in, pour in the boiling water, let that sit for four or five minutes, press down the grounds, and it comes with a handy little cup as well. So with a closable lid, perfect for around the camp, and finally, one of the things that uh, I won't be bringing, but when Juliana and I go camping, we bring a lot, is this Flexlight camp chair. Picked it up at REI. I think it weighs about a pound and a half, maybe? Something like that. Little pockets. Very durable material. Nice and stretchy. These were really great for like when you're uh, changing a flat tire or just stopping alongside the road and you just need a rest. You just need maybe 15 minutes to have a little lunch, but there's no place to sit. You pull these babies out, have them set up in no time. Now you got a place to sit. It's awesome. One of the most amazing things about camping these days is they've just come so far. The equipment is just so much better than when I remember it. Like when I was a young person and I was out backpacking, I mean, everything was heavy and it got wet. Tents didn't keep you dry. Stoves took forever. Today, boy, they got this stuff dialed in. And then other camping equipment that I keep in this bag would include I've got a sleeping bag liner. That way I don't have to wash my sleeping bag nearly as often. I mean, this is what gets dirty. So this is what I'm in contact with. And that's Sea to Summit. And then I also have a little blow up pillow, which I love. This thing just blows up and just gives you just a little bit of lift for your head so that camping is just a little extra comfortable. Finally, I have an REI sleeping bag. This thing probably goes down to 15 degrees, I would guess. So it's more of a three season bag. I don't ever imagine camping in the winter. This might get a little bit cold in Colorado, say in autumn or in spring. But again, this will cover me for almost every season that I would need. And look how small this is, and it's just light as can be. I love the equipment these days, it's amazing. And finally, I have a, uh, a blow-up backpacking mattress. Uh, this actually, it's a self-inflating sleeping pad. So you just open it up and it kind of starts to fill up. This is actually a women's. I think I bought this for my daughters and they had an extra one. And I've never gone out and got another one this, so it's small. It's not designed for my size, but this is plenty good. I mean, it works perfectly well and to be honest, camping is every bit as comfortable, if not much more comfortable than hoteling. So I love being able to do it.
and part of it is because we do have all this stuff. And then finally, the whole camping setup is complete with the tent. And this is a big Agnes. It's a tiger wall. This is a three-person tent. Uh, I'll give the exact weight below here. Very, very light, super easy to put together very spacious. When Juliana and I rode across the country, we were both able to fit comfortably in here along with all of our panniers. So all we'd need to do is just lock up our bikes outside and everything was safe and secure inside the tent. Love having that extra room. I'm kind of a big guy. I like having some room. The big Agnes is awesome and super durable. Love this tent. Still working on this, one of these back panniers. This is all my cycling clothes, all my extra cycling clothes. I keep it in a dry bag. I just have the dry bag sitting around, so it helps working as packing cubes and also keeps it extra dry. A good rain jacket, this thing will keep me as dry as it possibly can and keep me seen on a gray and dreary day. I keep a hat. Uh, this is my Ride the Rockies hat, and it is really stained and really gross, but that's what I got, and it's very light, and it works under my helmet. So if I'm really, if the sun is just really starting to bother me, if I feel like I'm getting too much sun, I just throw that on. I also have a little cotton, kind of a skull cap. Uh, obviously, you can buy ones that are made for this. This is just like a little kerchief kind of thing, but it keeps the sun off of my head. I keep a little neck gaiter, a white neck gaiter, and these are really great in the cold weather. It keeps your neck warm. In the hot weather, you just soak this thing down every time you get a chance. It keeps your neck cold. That'll really go a long way towards keeping your body cool. I've got a little broken case for my sunglasses, and I have bifocal sunglasses so that I can read my navigation and also be able to see where I'm going. But I also keep some clear ones, and that's just because, like, if it's really dark, if it's a gray day, or if you're biking at night, God forbid, you need to cover your eyes. What else do we have in here? Got a couple of pairs of these padded underwear, and I wear these, I usually wear regular cycling shorts when I'm road biking, but when I'm bike touring, I kind of like wearing regular shorts um, with padded shorts underneath. And that way, you know, when I walk into a restaurant or I do all the kinds of things that you do, you know, people don't look at you like, oh yeah, here comes a cyclist. It's more like, you know, here comes another person. And it helps you blend in a little bit more. So I've got a couple of those. I do have some knee warmers in case it gets cold. Rather than having long cycling pants, a pair of knee warmers will do the trick. All goes into a dry bag, keeps it separate, and it seems to work pretty well. Also, when I'm camping, I always like to have a microfiber towel. This thing is really small, but it, it's amazing how quickly it will dry you off. So if you've got camp showers or if you need to take a little dip in the stream or something, this baby will come to your rescue when you've got something to dry you off with. The other thing I kind of keep is a, uh, it's just got clips on it and hang your laundry out. When you come to a hotel or even in a campground, you know, you can just string this thing out and dry everything as quickly as possible. You need to be able to wash things on the road. I don't usually bring any detergent because if I'm at a hotel, I'm always going to use the shampoo uh, that they have available and I'll just wash it with that. That only leaves us with one pannier. This pannier is where I keep all of my regular clothes and I keep it in another dry bag just because why, why risk having your clothes get wet on you? But I like uh, having civilian clothes when I'm done with the day. I like being able to hit the restaurant and be you know, out of my sweaty cycling clothes. A lot of people who are bike packing or that kind of thing, you know, it's more of a outdoorsy, more of a rough in it kind of thing. I like being able to tour and being able to be in a place and being able to enjoy it. So I probably carry more regular clothes than a lot of people do. It's got a nice super light pair of loafers. Very, very lightweight and very, very comfortable. Of course, I keep them wrapped up, keep the stink down. I got a pair of short sleeve shirts 
pockets, which I actually really love wearing these uh, when I'm riding. Uh, they're just, you know, you can unbutton them and it just keeps it open. And again, I'm not really wearing cycling clothing when I'm bike touring. I'm really just wearing regular clothes and these are great. Uh, this one in particular is an Eddie Bauer and dries so fast and never wrinkles and is very, very light on your body. This is a gift from my daughters and, you know, definitely makes me a little bit more fashionable out there on the road. I got a regular old t-shirt. In this case, I believe it's a Rails to Trails t-shirt advertising the cause and then a basic undershirt as well. What else do we have in this grab bag? This is actually a smart wool underlayer. Smart wool is great. I mean, it kind of sucks if you have moths because the moths will eat this stuff, but Smart wool doesn't seem to stink. I mean, you can wear it and wear it and wear it, and it takes quite a while for it to start picking up the body odors. For something that you're wearing while you're riding, it's hard to beat. I bring about five pairs of socks, probably should do three. But socks you wear all the time when you're riding and then, you know, at night. So I really like having plenty of socks. Here's another sock or two. This is starting to look ridiculous. I mean, is it too much, really? I think it might be too much. I roll up a pair of swim trunks. I mean, if I'm staying at a hotel where there's a swimming pool and I have time to actually take a dip, what could be better? Especially if there's a hot tub, are you kidding me? What a great way to end a, a long day of just, you know, soaking in the water, you know, going from hot to cold and hot to cold. Mm, so good for your body. So I always pack a pair of uh, swim trunks. Uh, I have two pairs of these shorts and they're as lightweight as I can get them and as quick drying as I can get them. Yeah, these are what an REI brand, no prana. And I wear these over the padded underwear. While I'm on the subject, when I'm packing, I roll everything. Everything gets folded, everything gets rolled. I've got a smart wool long sleeve. Again, what's nice about smart wool, not only does it not stink too bad, but it keeps you warm when it's cool and it keeps you cool when it's warm. It's an amazing material. Bunch of pairs of underwear. And these are long pants and super lightweight traveling pants. And this is what I wear out on the town. They're not the most beautiful looking pants I've ever worn. And I kind of miss my jeans sometimes, but they're super lightweight and they're very fast drying. So if I need to wash these in the sink, I can wash these in the sink and they'll be dry by morning, usually. Yeah, so that's about it for the clothes. Again, I think we're looking at uh, a pair of long, light traveling pants, two pairs of light traveling shorts, a couple of t-shirts, a couple of button-up short sleeves, you know, maybe five pairs of socks, maybe five pairs of underwear, and a pair of shoes some loafers and a pair of swimming trunks. When it comes to electronics, I like being able to look at my film. I like making sure that it's in more than one place. So uh, on longer trips, believe it or not, I do take a laptop and this is quite a bit of weight. I would like to have something smaller, but you know, this is what I got. And so that would also include having a charger. So then I have a bag that goes on the back rack, and this is mostly for uh, maintenance and that kind of thing. This is where I keep my lock. Uh, this is a Kevlar lock, combination lock, and you know, this just gives you a little bit of security, slows people down at any rate. You know, nothing really stops thieves if they really want to, and as many people have said, you know, never let your bike out of your sight for long. But if you're camping by yourself in a campground, you're gonna have to go and take a shower or you're probably gonna wanna go take a shower. You know, you can't always have your bike with you. So, really handy to have. I also keep a little extra toilet paper in there in case anything comes up. And then inside here, you know, I've got a, a little hood for the whole thing so that it stays nice and dry. Um, it's a really great bag, but I don't think that it's waterproof. It's made by Vode. I don't know if that's something you can get in America or not. Found this in Switzerland. Love this bag. It's just really handy. It Velcros on the bottom, just loops up in four places. And that's it. So it's not tricky, it's not complicated. Obviously I have a pump. I talked a little about uh, keeping things organized and I do, I label them. So these are parts. I've got spare parts in here. I've got a derailleur hanger in here. Just a few spare odds and ends, things from my panniers even. Tools, which include like a 
air pressure gauge, my tire irons, my multi-tool, but I also have like a, make sure that I got a Phillips head and some kind of a very light pair of pliers in there. And then I also keep a bag of fasteners. These are just things that you know, sometimes you just need something to put something together. So you've got zip ties in here, you've got electrical tape, you've got bungee cords, and you've got gear ties in here too. So this is a lot, but uh, it's fairly lightweight. I will probably lighten this load a little bit for this trip since it's short. It's very reassuring and I can't tell you how many times I've had to repair something or just fix something that I didn't have the tools for, the right parts for or anything, but I was through all this stuff I was able to put everything together and make it all work. Always be prepared. I also like keeping some monkey wipes available and that way I can kind of clean the bike down I don't have to take it to a car wash and hose the whole thing I can just kind of clean that chain get any of the grit out of there give it a real oil and also don't forget chain lube so that's all stuff that goes into the back bag it's a lot of stuff right and then just a couple of odds and ends that I like to th think about when I'm Packing. I like having a waterproof protected wallet, something that's super lightweight and doesn't take up a lot of room. And hopefully you can actually put keys on it or if you need keys. A lot of times when we're doing bike tours, we don't need keys. Nice little waterproof wallet, probably was like 10 bucks. This is something that I'm sure a lot of bike tourists do not carry but we love it. It's, uh, it's just a little insulated igloo lunchbox and I strap it to the front rack. And uh, inside there, keep an ice bag, which, you know, we chill in the freezer at the hotel. And, you know, that can kind of stay cool for a day or two. It'll definitely extend the life of your cheese or your fruit or your lunch meats. That comes with a little ace pocket so that I can put this baby in there. If you need to ice your knee or if anything that hurts, you got, you got an ice pack. Uh, that's pretty handy. I love having this. And it's also a place where when you get your groceries, you can kind of just dump it in there. And then finally, I like having a small backpack. Something just big enough to carry a couple of waters, a jacket or an extra shirt or something, so that when you go off and take a walk, or if you want to go to the showers and you, you just need a, a fresh pair of clothes, you know, stick it in here, go to the shower, hang this up, and everything's uh, all together. I know, I know, I know they say that ounces lead to pounds and pounds leads to pain and pain leads to the dark side but i tend to like to pack comfortably and i don't really mind the feeling of riding with a lot of weight uh, if, if i was doing colorado if i was doing the rockies and if i was doing a bunch of passes i would absolutely be focusing very strongly on how to keep this load light so that's pretty much everything that i need to worry about packing. I put all this together in about an hour and a half or so. I've got the list. It's, it's in the descriptions. Uh, but I would like to show you a couple of things on the bike. I also have a real nice bell there. I think I'll go on forever. This, this quad lock, I can't show it to you, but suffice it to say that this iPhone that I'm filming with just locks on there, and um, but it locks it in into this little uh, four-sided kind of locking mechanism. See there, you can kind of get a good view of our uh, of the bag that the GoPro goes into. This all kind of fits onto a little extender, which it attaches. It's probably again a ten-dollar item, I would say, probably a ten-dollar item, and just gives you, especially with these butterfly handlebars, it gives you a little bit of extra room. Of course, I've got a light in case I need it. I've got a rear light over here, nice and bright. Juliana got busted in Germany for running that light during the day. The cop pulled her over and said, um, you do not need to have such a bright light. This is very distracting and way too bright. She got the Germans angry at her. And then here's my mirror. And uh, people have asked what the brand is. It's called a bike case. And I believe that is an American made item. I bought that in Ohio along the uh, Cuyahoga Valley. And it's a great mirror. So that kind of sums up my cockpit. You've got a mirror here. You've got a light here. You've got the quad lock for the phone here. You've got a bag for the GoPro here. You got a bell. And that's keeping it pretty simple. 
With that, I think everything is packed and ready to go. I don't think I need a whole lot else. The other thing I would just say is when you're packing all this stuff, just keep weighing it and keep balancing it. Make sure that the bags all essentially weigh the same. Front doesn't have to weigh the same as the back, but side to side, you've got to keep those, you know, within a pound or two, I would say. So keep working on it and find a, find a good balance. And then once you find that balance, everything stays in that bag. Don't just figure, well, I'll just put it here and here and here. If you keep a system and you keep it going, you're going to be able to find your stuff a lot quicker. So a system is really going to be your friend. With that, I think I'm ready to hit the trail. And I will see you on the other side. Take care and uh, have a good one, y'all. Happy trails.